So I wanted to show you a project we've been working on here that uh, I think is very important for our ecosystems. This is a small wet weather, basically stream. So we basically had sycamores and bare ground and the water was taking away the dirt off the stream banks and losing all the nutrients from the manure, the cattle shading up. So what we done is we come in and we cut the sycamore trees down for starters. And then now we're trying to heal that bare bank back with vegetation that not only will hold the soil and gather more soil, but also that's palatable livestock at the same time because we're running a grazing business here. So uh, some plants we got growing here that are really tolerant to the flooding and the water. All these plants will have their roots setting in water. This is a switchgrass from last year, a big perennial warm season. He's got quite a root mass under there to help hold things. This here is a tick seed coreopsis. Uh, it's just a small palatable forb plant that's coming on. Um, all of them well adapted to this type of environment. We got us a purple cone flower growing out here on a gravel bar. There's gray headed cone flower right down here by the water's edge. And here's something that's really neat. This grass here, not this forb, I'll move it out of the way. That's a white beard tongue, by the way, that was growing down here. This here is foul manna grass growing right here up from the water's edge. And it's perfectly adapted back up here behind us. But this is also foul manna grass growing right down here at the water's edge. This here's another clump of foul manna grass making its old island. Uh, we don't know for sure how this will go. But what we would like to see is foul mountain grass growing all the way from that bank to that bank with just water meandering through them as more of a wetland. Very palatable grass to livestock at a time of the year that, I mean, that's got incredible growth on that. And we're here at May 3rd. Um, that arrived with any of your other cool season grasses. There's a plant here that is, this is wild bergamot growing down here. It's not a very palatable plant, but it's a great pollinator and uh, insect species. So, you know, it's all part of the ecosystem, whether it's just for cattle or whether it's still doing its part to help hold the soil and we need the insects and the pollinators. This here is sawtooth sunflower stalks from last year. And this is the new growth of sawtooth. Uh, this has a regenerative root system that you've heard Amy talk about. Uh, helping build soil and loosening soil. This was hairy mountain mint. Uh, it's another non-real palatable species, but it's uh, another good great pollinator plant. And we believe that all these plants kind of work together and it's good to have some non-palatable plants around your water sources, your high traffic areas, because if all you have is palatable and you leave them a day too long, then you've overgrazed everything. If you got some non-palatable ones growing there, you still got soil cover, ground cover. Um, it kind of helps things go along. Up there, you see kind of a woody plant out in it. That's a willow tree. And we like the willow trees because willows don't get as big and as aggressive and they don't grow tall and then tip over. They're also very, the cattle will graze the leaves off of them and the short stems keeping them vegetative and short. Whereas your sycamore trees get really tall and are like a lever pulling on that root system. And as your streams meander and start to eat the dirt out around those roots of them, and then they topple over into the creek and they cause a log jam which puts more pressure on the bank and pull the roots out of the bank, leaving a bare exposed spot. So we like shorter shrub type woody species. Um, grasses and forbs are, are really good. They don't, they take the flooding, they anchor it with the roots, the top protects the surface of the ground from erosion, and they're still palatable to your livestock. So really work well. This was Cole Hamilton with Hamilton Native Outpost. If you got any questions, comments, or we can help you, Please reach out and contact us.